Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd like to take this opportunity and welcome all our viewers who have managed to join us today on our GFG session. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity and acknowledge my senior pastor, Pastor Joeling, and also our overseer, Pastor Strike, and also to thank them for <clears throat> giving me this platform or allowing me and trusting me to come to this platform and share with you the word of God. And before I go any further, also I'd like to take this opportunity and also acknowledge my co-leaders, that is Mrs. Baloi, Mrs. Mashele, and Mrs. Mawasa. I would like to pass my critics to them and also to our fellowship, the GFG. I would like to say to you guys, we miss you and we love you and we'll continue to pray for you and we hope that this too shall pass and we'll manage to gather again and do the things that we love together. <clears throat> Today, I will also want to thank all the ministers or all the people who have managed to come to this platform on the GFG session to come and minister before me. That is Prof. Chauke uh, and also Mrs. Baloi. Thank you for setting up the platform and also paving a way for me. Today, I want us to go and learn together the word of God under the title, The God-Fearing Generation or the generation that fears the Lord. We're going to get our scripture reading today from the book of Proverbs 1 verse 7. It reads as follows. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, the Bible here is telling us that the fear of the Lord is the foundation or the starting point of wisdom. Now, what is this fear? When the Bible talks of the fear of the Lord, it is, re it is referring to the referential fear or the reverent fear of God. That is not the fear of being scared or of being terrified of God, that God is waiting somewhere out there for us to make a mistake and waiting to just strike on us. No, it's talking about the honor, the, rever the reverential fear of God. That is the sense of awe, to highly respect the word of God, to highly esteem him, to highly respect him, to how we view him personally and how we take the word of God for our lives. That is the fear that the Bible is referring to. And also it continues and says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, how do we then despise this wisdom and instructions? We despise wisdom and instructions when we become disobedient to the God, to God's word. When we exalt ourselves and cast God aside and conform to the standards and the patterns of this life. That is, if we not acknowledge God in our ways and we do exactly what God says we must not do, that is despising his word. And by so doing, we become fools. And sometimes, you know, we live in this life, we think that is cool because these are the patterns, these are things that the world does, you know. And we feel, you know, we want to conform, we want to blend in. And the word of God here, it tells us that when we do so, we become fools. You know, I like to say, you know the JFG guys, that I like to say, don't become a cool fool. It may look cool. But if it's despising the word of God, the Bible says you are becoming fools. So it's possible to be a cool fool and that is not what we are meant to be. We are the God-fearing generation. We also become fools when we end up treating God as if he's irrelevant. You know, we think we know too much. We cast him out. You know, we think we are the, you know, we are, we, 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 we are the end. We are the top. We know it all. You know, that's where we become fools because God has created us. He's the one who has given us life and breath. He knows it all. He knows the beginning and the end of our life. You know, so there is no way that God can become irrelevant. Yes, his principles may look foreign, may look uh, irrelevant to the standards and the patterns of the world. Hence, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to measure our life according to those patterns because when we compare the two, yes, the patterns and the standards of the, the instructions of God may look foreign to the patterns of the, to the trends of this world. Today we talk of Twitter, the things that trends, you know, that becomes fashionable, fashionable for this particular time, you know, and if we conform to such doings, you know, we become, we render God irrelevant. Now, I want us to also look at the scripture, Romans 12, verse 2. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, I like it at the end. It says, so that you may prove what the will of God is. If we do not conform, you know, it's got an end result. We will prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect 
for our life it means god has got intentions for our life he's, he's not just giving us instructions for the sake of just giving us instructions you see instructions are actually detailed information of how to do something so basically god is saying when when we go back to our uh, uh, base scripture which is proverbs 1 7 says full distract instruction. what are these instructions these instructions are to get us to where we will prove the will and the perfect will of god which is good and accept- acceptable and perfect for our lives this is for our own good it's for our own protection you see when the bible says do not conform it goes back to say do not get used to the patterns of this life you see some things are superficial you know you will agree with me that today we're under lockdown nobody knew that these things was going to happen there were things that were fashionable then the trends that were happening what is going on today we're all in our lockdown there are things that look so superficial look so glamorous in this in the face of the world but today all has come to a halt because of this law because nobody knew but trust you me that god knew this did not take god by surprise and god did warn us I'm going to come to that. Let me not get ahead of us. It says, do not be conformed. It says, be transformed, meaning that progressively change, continuously change. You see, renewing your mind is not a once-off event. It's not a state that we can say we've arrived, I've changed, it's enough, that's it, I've accomplished it. No, it's a continuous progress. It's a continuous progress. We need to change, to renew our minds, to focus on godly values ethical attitudes that comes through the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit continues to guide us to lead us you see he is the best friend with the best qualities let us look at isaiah 11 verse 12 you know to check this best friend with the best qualities i like to call him that it talks of the ministries of the holy spirit it says the holy spirit is spirit of wisdom he is the spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel the spirit of strength or the spirit of might and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of reverential obedience or fear of god you see god has given us this spirit whom enables us he also give us the spirit of reverential fear the fear that we talked about so when we have this spirit he enables us he gives us the ability to also fear god the ability and when we fear god it becomes the basis of wisdom the wisdom that we need what am i trying to say i'm trying to say you know what as the gfg let's allow to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let allow ourselves to be influenced by the Holy Spirit and become the God-fearing generation. Let's fear God. Let's exalt God above everything else. Anything contrary to the word of God, let us not take it. Today we are under lockdown. We've got so much time in our hands. Many things come our way. We can be tempted in so many ways. But let us remember who we are. We're still the God-fearing generation. God has the last say. Anything contrary to the word of God, it may look cool. It may look glamorous. But anything contrary to the word of God, it is not for us. Let us not become cool fools. It may be cool today, but believe you me, the road to it, it ends nowhere. Let's allow the Spirit of God to guide us, for He is the Spirit of wisdom. Now more than ever, we need the wisdom of God. We need the understanding of God. We need counsel. We need advices. We need strength. We need might. We need to. We need ability. You see, when the Spirit of God, it does not only come with this wisdom, understanding, counsel, advice, and knowledge. It also comes with strength, meaning it comes with ability. It comes with enablement. He enables us. All the things we can be able to come out even in this lockdown, achieve greater things. Because the, the Bible also continues to say, you know, all things work together for good to them that loves the Lord. And I believe this lockdown and this epidemic that is happening at the moment, it's for, it's for a good change. You know, good things are going to come out of it. Good things are going to be best. You know, let's allow the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of might, whom he will also enable us to achieve these things. You see, the Holy Spirit's instructions are accessible to everyone who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Our Father, Pastor Strike, once took us through the series of the leadings of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit leads us. I'm just going to highlight some of the leadings or some of the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He said during his teachings that the Holy Spirit leads us through the inward witness. He also leads us through perception. He leads us 
through the still small voice he leads us also with dreams and visions you know when i was going through these leadings i thought to myself you know none of these leadings actually comes from the outside if you check most of them it's actually from within from within to outward so these things that all that we need as the GFG is actually within us. We do not need the world to tell us who we are. We do not need the world to tell us what to do. But it's all built in us. I'm going to give this example, like I said earlier on, that you know what? Some of us, the Holy Spirit had guided us. I mean, perhaps some of you, before lockdown, the Holy Spirit, through inward witness or through perception, you felt compelled to achieve something. Something pushed you to say, you know what? You need to accomplish this particular task by this date. Perhaps some listened and they managed to do it. Perhaps some said, I, I still have so much time. And little did we know that in a few days time, our president is going to announce lockdown. And then when lockdown was announced, those who perhaps listened, they said, you know what? I thank God I did one, two, three. I knew. I felt it in my spirit that there was just something. How did not know? Because the inward spirit, our spirit bears witness with our spirit. And if we yield and listen, we'll avoid all these distractions, all these mishaps that the enemy sets for us to trap us with. And perhaps some are saying, you know what? I should have. I felt it. I knew it. If only I should have. You still have a chance. Because even under this lockdown, the, the Spirit of God continues to speak to us. Continue to birth different things from the within. And some of you are waiting. No, I'm just waiting for lockdown. To end. there's a push in your spirit saying, you know what? Do it now. Listen to the inward witness. Listen to the inner perception. Listen to that still small voice. And sometimes when you try to talk it through your friends, they won't understand it. Because this is a still small voice coming within you. It's so powerful. You feel so convicted about it. And sometimes when you share it with people, they don't understand. But you so much believe and trust in it. Because God is speaking through you. That is the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Let us not allow the trends, the patterns. It may look uncool, but trust me. God knows, just like I indicated, just like I gave that example, God knew that there was going to be lockdown. With our natural senses, with our natural understanding, I don't think we could have predicted that. Nobody knew. Even the false prophets, nobody prophesied, you know. But the Spirit pushed us, told us. So it's very important to listen, lest we can become fools. Because he's saying if we despise the wisdom, we become fools. Let's continue. What is this perfect will? Because when I read in Romans 12, it says... So that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable and perfect. What is this perfect will of God that the Bible is talking about? The first one is riches, honor and life. When we yield to the Holy Spirit, we'll have riches, we'll be full of life, we'll lead an honorable life. Where do we get that? Let's read Proverbs 22 verse 4. It says, By humility, and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Believe you me that these are the most important things that even the elderly are looking for. Riches, honor and life. When we yield to the leadings of the Holy Spirit, this is the perfect will of God for our lives. God wants us to live in riches. God wants us to lead an honorable life. And he wants us to lead a life that is full of life. You see, you can be alive today. But just being alive and not having life. Our father usually says, you know, you can be alive, you can you can be just believing and being alive, but not having life and waiting to be buried later on in your in, in your life. What does that mean? You know, you can just be breathing, but not having purpose, not having anything to accomplish, you know. And some even commit suicide because they don't see any hope for tomorrow. They don't see the reason for living so let us not just be breathing but let us lead life full of life full of passion full of life that is driven you know by the holy spirit when we read again proverbs 14 27 it says the fear of the lord is the fountain of life to turn away from this nest from this nest of death yo this is this is so powerful it says the fear of the lord is the fountain of life to turn away from the snares of death. 
brothers and sisters there's nets of death that enemy puts every day for our life and believe you me through our natural understanding and senses we cannot pick up this nest he sets trap for us to because the purpose of the devil he comes to kill devour and distract our life you know he puts this nest and when you know when his nest is put it's put intentionally so that you don't see it you know it blends with the environment that's what it does so there are some things that in our life they look so cool they look like they're fashionable but the end of it all is death and sometimes with our natural understanding we won't be able to detect it we need the guidance of the holy spirit we need the fear of god we need the hence we need these instructions to navigate through life to navigate through this ness because with our own eyes with our own intelligence we won't know where this ness are put at because they are put to blend seamlessly with the environment with the things that we are accustomed to we think it's cool by the end of it all is death so but here the bible is saying the fear of the lord is the fountain of life and it turns you away from this ness of death it will lead us it will help us navigate we will not be misled anything contrary to the word of god is a no go we will know not with our natural senses not with our own understanding but through the guidance of the holy spirit through the one who is in us through the fear of god because we have highly esteemed god to such a point where anything contrary to his word we shall not do it second thing what is good and perfect will of god that is acceptable for our life it is confidence assurance and hope that tomorrow is better you know that god has good plans for us that even in this lockdown there is good that is going to come out of it for all things works together for good to us who loves the lord proverbs 14:26 it says in the fear of the lord there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge we have a place of refuge in the lord we've got confidence we are not struck down like the world is today we have hope that tomorrow will be better we have hope that god is doing a new thing in this season and we shall be part of it for we have the holy spirit who knows who is our navigator who knows what tomorrow is. i may not know how tomorrow will turn out be but the one in me he knows and if i allow him to lead me if i allow him to guide me trust me i will avoid all this mess all the traps that the enemy think he has put in place for me thirdly or the third one which is the last one it says what is it the perfect will of god which is acceptable and perfect for our life long life prolonged day prolonged days proverbs 10:27 it says the fear of the lord prolongs days but the years of the wicked will be shortened you see when we fear god it correlates it talks together with the one that says he will turn away from this ness you see also when it talks of death it may not be death necessarily as a physical death but it talks of papers it talks of passion you see there are some people who they still alive but they are dead they no longer have passion they no longer have reason for tomorrow they just alive and waiting to be buried but when the word of god says he will turn away from this ness of death he will protect us he will protect even our dreams the dreams that the enemy thought he has stolen you see the devil wants to come and kill your future some of the things that we do today may not kill us physically as in physical death but may kill our passion may kill our future and god is worried and concerned about that and if we yield to the leadings of the holy spirit god will protect us these are the snares snares that the enemy puts for example i don't think you know everybody knows the danger of smoking but people still continue to smoke perhaps when they started they just thought it's just for fun and the enemy puts it as a snare to say it's just only for today it's a trap you don't know slowly but surely it's a trap you think you are in control but you're not it's a snare as snare is meant for you not to detect it it blends seamlessly with the environment of in what you are comes to you think you're in control but you are not before you know it you are grabbed before you know it you don't know how you are addicted and some of these things are there to distract our future are there to capture us let us be careful it may look cool it may look glamorous but if it's contrary to the word of god refuse it and believe you me the world will call you fool but trust me in the eyes of god you are wise and you shall lead an honorable and pleasing life with full of riches and life full of passion driven 
and purpose. Allow me to end here for today. You know, this is the way that I wanted to encourage you as a GFG, as you're sitting at home with many challenges. You know, it can be anxiety not knowing what tomorrow holds. Allow the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Listen to that still small voice. God has a bigger plan. Tomorrow is better. We are a God-fearing generation. God is with us even in this season. Do not fear. Be courageous and resilient. For God is birthing a new thing even in this season. I will end here and I'll take this time before I end to say, continue to be with us every Saturday at 16 hours. We come to you as the GFG. Please also take this time and share this broadcast with your friends and everyone around the circle. Hey GFG, remember this time is not time to relax. It's not time to just sit at home, watch TV, you know, be on social media, but it's a time to uplift ourselves. It is a time to develop ourselves. We have so much time in our hands. Let's make use of it. Let's study. Let's continue to dream. Let us not let that giant in us sleep, but let us take this opportunity. Prepare ourselves. Study hard. Still continue to aspire to what we wanted to achieve in this year 2020. God is still with us and God is still continuing to work in us. So don't let those dreams dry. Do not be deceived. You know, everything is well. Nothing is wrong with us and nothing wrong with your studies. So be encouraged, be resilient, be strong in the power of the Lord. We love you and wanted to take this time and greet you and pass our encouragement to you as the leaders of GFG. We love you with the love of God. Be safe out there. Take care.